Hey everyone, I'm James Bollinger. I'm the safety orientation leader and we're just going to be going over today 33 CFR Code of Federal Register um, part 142 subparts A, B, and C and just to generalize real quick, um, the biggest thing about this is uh, all about workplace safety. So let's get started, shall we? Um, subpart A is it's called general. It's just about general knowledge and general safety. Um, part 142.4 part A is that all employees with a lease or permit under the Outer Continental Shelf Act must make sure that their work is in compliance with um, normally the Coast Guard or other OSHA regulations and that they have no hazards. And 142.4 um, Part B states that all operators, contractors, and even owners are could be liable and are held liable and must make sure that everything is in compliance and that, again, that there's no uh, hazards that they could prevent. And then 142.4 Part C is um, just put the definition for recognized hazards in Part A and B. And that would be um, one is all the hazards that could be generally known in the industry or two that are routinely controlled. Um, and for another, this is all continuation of part, uh, subpart A is that 142.7A states that anyone can report a possible violation to an officer in charge. So anyone on any platform or the rig, whatever the case may be, they can report it to an offshore, an officer in charge or otherwise known as a marine inspector or marine, doing marine inspections. Um, 142.7, uh, part B is that once uh, the violation is uh, reviewed by the officer in charge, um, they must notify the owner and proper personnel to make sure that um, other enforcement actions are gonna be held and um, everyone's gonna be held liable for the certain situation that occurred. 142.7 Part C is um, the identity of the person making the report can be left unknown if they wish to. The only people that will have to know about it is um, other officers or and, uh, the the employees of Department of Transportation. And that wraps up Part A, so let's go to Part B. So Part B is all about PPE, personal protective equipment. And it starts off with uh, 142.24 Port A, and that uh, each holder of a lease or permit must make sure that the proper uh, PPE is being worn. Um, kind of, kind of goes with the uh, subpart A, of course, with the top where the operators and all the owners could be liable and make sure that they're in compliance with the operation uh, with safety standards. This just goes in more further and explains some of those standards in more uh, detail. And 142.24 Part B, it's got to make sure it's all people uh, responsible for operations much must make sure that everyone involved is, of course, wearing their PPE. So that kind of goes with still subpart A as well. Um, 142.27 Part A is deals with all people grinding, welding, uh, any type of machine, certain machine work. Um, they must wear she, they must wear eye and shield protectors. Um, 142.27 Part B deals with uh, the eye and the face protector must be in good condition, and that goes along with the. Uh, uh, 142.27 Part C as well, and they also uh, have to be inspected every so often periodically, and they must be marked with inf uh, the information required from that inspection. Um, 142.30 Part A deals with workers must wear uh, head protection uh, where falling objects and uh, other electric electrical conductors or can present certain hazards. Um, 142.30 Part B deals with uh, head protectors must be marked again by the information from the inspection, make sure they're in good conditions and so forth. Um, 142.33 Part A deals with workers must wear um, foot protection where probability for foot injury can occur. 142.33 Part B deals with a uh, a pair of footwear must be marked again with uh, the proper inf information, documentation, just saying that, yes, it's in good condition. Yes, it's okay to work in these uh, these boots or whatever. 142.36 deals with workers must wear uh, protective clothing when in areas with flying particles, molten me uh, metals, radiant energy, heavy dust, etc., things of that nature. Um, 142.39 parts A and B is kind of coincide, so I'll put, I'll put them together. Um, people working and entering into a certain atmosphere must wear the uh, a respiratory protection again, just to prevent them from any uh, to, from inhaling anything. 142.39. 
part A, part one and two deal with all procedures and the proper selection of respiratory protection are being used. So there's the, of course there's different respirators. So you have to pick the best one for that particular situation. Um, 142.39 part C deals with all respiratory protection again approved and maintained by certain standards. And 142.42 uh, parts A and B are going to put these together. Um, or any worker liable that could fall 10 or more feet um, has to wear proper safety harnesses um, and make sure, again, make sure those are all up to date and are, are good to go. Um, 142.45 deals with uh, workers must wear uh, life vests or other life preservers if they are liable to fall into water. So instead of them, if they are hurt, if they do fall in the water and they are hurt, at least the life, the life vest can maybe save them. So it could potentially save their lives. And 142.48, deal with any portable or fixed eyewash equipment must be provided near drilling floors, mudrooms, or other areas that could prevent an eye injury. And um, let's go to Part C, shall we? So Part C is all about its general workplace conditions. And it starts off with 142.84 and just basically says it states all areas such as ramps, platforms, stair stairways, or your workplace in general must be clean and clear from any hazards. So if you grind some, instead of leaving the grinder on the table or just leaving any cords on the floor for any tripping hazards, um, just best to pick them up right after you're done with that particular job. Um, 142.87 states that um, opening to decks must be covered or guarded when in use. And of course, that just prevents someone from falling in. Um, 142.90, part A and B, deal with uh, when the worker, when work is being performed, the equipment must be locked or otherwise dis disconnected. So basically, the logout tagout system, you know, that we're all familiar with. 142.90, uh, part C, deals with the tag must be placed at the power source of the equipment being used. So if someone stops it being used and someone goes to it to use that certain uh, equipment or they know where the power source is and it's locked out, then they know that's in use and just they, it lets them know. Um, 142.90, part A, B, and C, deal with tag out equipment uh, being worked on, power source being disconnected or the equipment deactivated. And that, and that tag must be removed, cannot be removed without permission, without either the person using it or the proper authority. And that concludes uh, all the parts A, B, and C of uh, the 33 Code of Federal Register, Part 142. And uh, I'll see you all later.